How's it going? I'm Ira Golden, and welcome to my blog. All right, okay, so let's just get into it this time, shall we? <laughs> um, so I said at the end of the last one, this one was going to be titled True to Myself, um, and I sort of knew what I wanted to talk about for this one. Um, I think I do sort of know what I want to talk about for this one, but I apologize if it ends up being a little bit rambly and babbly and whatever else. <laughs> As a lot of them seem to be at the moment. Um, so, I'm one of those people who I'm very happy and very comfortable with who I am as a person um, and I've always been very comfortable and happy with who I am as a person. Um, I, I believe in self-improvement, um, I believe you know there are always ways you can improve yourself, I don't think I'm a perfect person, I think there are definitely traits that I have that um, I need to work on and I need to sort of, you know, um, not necessarily fix, there's nothing necessarily wrong with these traits, it's more a case of the not things about me that I necessarily think are in keeping with the rest of who I am, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, they're not necessarily like bad traits, I don't, you know, Everybody has bad habits for a bit. They, you know, the little quirks of my personality, which are maybe left over from, you know, being a bit of a moody teenager, or they're a result of my extreme introversion. And again, there's nothing wrong with necessarily having these these flaws. And I'm always going to have flaws. I I understand that, um, but they're not necessarily things that are in keeping with the person that I am now and and, and who I want to be. And and all that kind of, of stuff. So it's a case of like I believe in self improvement. I always believe there are there are things about yourself that you can not necessarily completely get rid of, but learn to adapt to and learn to find things about those less positive traits about yourself um, to incorporate them into being more positive traits about yourself or less bad traits about yourself <laughs> that's not a particularly good way of phrasing that but I hope you kind of get what I mean so yeah I'm I'm definitely I think very aware of the fact that I'm not a perfect person I'm very aware of the things that I need to sort of work on um in order to be the best me that I can be but I've always been happy with the me that I am um and some of it sort of comes down to this sort of innate confidence I have um, in myself and I'm happy with who I am as a person. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a little bit weird, I don't think there's anything wrong with being introverted and not necessarily as sociable as everybody else. I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with having a very vivid imagination. <laughs> um, and yes, there are, you know, as I said, things about myself that aren't necessarily fantastic, but these are things that I've learned to live with. I've I've adapted, um, I'm learning how to find more positivity within it so that they're not like these necessarily negative traits about myself. It's like, there's nothing wrong with me being an introvert. I, I understand I'm a highly introverted person, I'm never going to be not a highly introverted person, but I can learn how to take these really bubbly <laughs> parts of my personality that I know exist. Um, because I do have a rather large personality for an introvert. Um, well, that, that's not fair. I'm sure lots of introverts out there have fairly large personalities. Um, but what I'm kind of saying is, I'm, I'm for somebody as, as introverted as, as I am, who can find socialising very difficult, um, I do have a rather large personality. <laughs> and, and this confidence in myself, which a lot of, you know, a lot of introverts do struggle with a little bit. Um, so I'm, you know, learning how to take this personality that I, that I have and connect in social situations, um, which, you know, has tremendously helped me with, with my job and the career progression that I, I've got going on there. Um, but I still find a lot of things really difficult, um, 
be, partly because of the extreme introversion and partly because my medical conditions can sometimes make it really hard for me to get words out, as I'm sure you guys will notice from me doing the vlogs. <laughs> I don't always find the right words, I'll stumble, I will get a bit lost and a bit confused sometimes, and I can't help that. But that in turn can make my introversion worse. So I'm I'm constantly kind of not fighting against my own introversion. Because as I said, there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. Not even like a, an extreme introvert like I am. There's nothing wrong with being introverted. But because I am doing a customer facing job, um, because I'm working for a customer, you know, uh, service industry, um, I do need to be able to interact with people. I do need to be able to project a sociable aura, <laughs> even if I don't necessarily have one. Um, and so it, it's kind of a case of not trying to be an extrovert because I'm never going to be an extrovert. It's about taking the good bits about my personality and, and the confidence I have in who I am and pushing that forward in order to sort of compensate for the fact that I'd rather not deal with people. <laughs> and that's, again, that's an unfair assessment of who I am as a person because I actually love working in the customer service industry. Um, I find it incredibly draining. There's a reason I don't have a particularly lively social life outside of work because I need to take the energy that I've used up from working and, and recharge it somehow um so you know it, it's it's a case of yeah i find it incredibly draining working in the customer service industry but i also find it incredibly satisfying working in the customer service industry and finding these bits about myself that yeah okay i'm not a people person in the sense of i don't actively go out to socialize with people i quite like my own company, I you know, don't worry too much if I haven't seen or spoken to anybody in a few days because I know everybody's going to be fine, I'm, you know, I, I don't you know, have anxieties when it comes to that, that kind of thing, um, but I find groups intimidating, um, I, not, it's not even a case of intimidating, it's a case of, it's just easier just to sort of listen and, and be interested in what's kind of going on and I, I, maybe it's like like people watching side of me because I am a I am a writer and therefore I am a bit of a people watcher. Um, so sometimes it's kind of nice just to sort of be in a big group and not kind of interacting with it. But I do find that I'm not, you know I'm not a naturally social person. I'm not somebody who goes out seeking you know company from other people, um, and that can make group situations more difficult for me, that can make you know, social situations more difficult for me because although it's not a case of I can't do it or it's a case of it intimidates me necessarily, um, it's it's a case of it's just not something that I actively find or actively feel the need to seek out at all. Um, it's not something I actively feel the need to incorporate into, into my life because at the end of the day you know that that extra little bit of being social isn't something I feel that I necessarily need but there's nothing wrong with not needing that <laughs> and I'm perfectly happy with that I don't need that but at the same time as I said I'm working at a customer service job um, and I do enjoy working with customers. I do enjoy that kind of interaction that, you know, you know, it's nice making someone's day. Um, but that might come from other parts of my personality which are, you know, I I like I'm a people pleaser. I like making people happy. Um, part of the reason I want to be a writer is so that people can enjoy my stories. Um, I want to bring that kind of enjoyment to people. I want to you know, it would, I'd love to inspire people. I know that sounds a bit arrogant, but, you know, if you're inspiring people, it means that you've affected their lives in a, in a positive way. And I like the idea of being able to do that in, you know, finding ways of being able to do that. So working in the customer service industry allows me to 
develop and, and um, engage with and uh, grow that part of my personality. And that's, that's a good thing, that's a, that's a really positive thing. Um, it doesn't stop me from being an introvert, <laughs> but it does allow me to find a way of taking that part of my personality and, and coupling it with the fact that I do have a rather, you know, big personality and finding a way of not overcoming my introverted nature, but utilising my personality past my introverted nature and not sort of keeping myself to myself because that's my natural instinct. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm always fantastic at it. Certainly when I'm, you know, on one of my bad days when I'm really struggling to get words out, it's just so much easier just to go, you know, the rest of the world does not exist right now. Um, I need to just focus on what I'm doing and keep going and not worry too much about whether or not I'm making conversation with people. Well, I still try. <laughs> I'm not like completely ignorant. I still try. I'm still, you know, trying to be positive and, and happy. But when you're sort of like trying to get a sentence out two or three times and you just can't get the words and you're just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, then the then the introversion does tend to sort of take back over a little bit because it's it is tiring. It is tiring to you know have to push past your introverted nature and then push past another barrier. Um, so then you, you do kind of default to form a little bit. Um, and again, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. And as I said, there's nothing wrong with the way my personality is, and um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, any of the neg less positive parts of my personality. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't want to improve myself, and I don't want to find ways of being a better me, um, even if I'm never going to lose those less positive traits of myself. Um, it's, it's about not letting those less positive traits of yourself become all of you. It's uh, it's about finding, you know, the bits of yourself that you actually really do like and finding ways of allowing those parts of you to grow and, and to develop. And sometimes that means having to work around those less negative parts of yourself or adapt to those less negative parts of yourself or harbour those less negative parts of yourself in a more positive way and I think you know it's important it's very important to like yourself and not you know for the if you don't like yourself then nobody else will like you and not for the you know and not what am I trying to say <laughs> this, yeah brain um and I think it's it's important for a person to like themselves because so much of your confidence and your self-worth comes from within and if you don't like yourself very much or if you listen to everybody else's negativity and that starts giving you a negative opinion of yourself your self-worth shrinks and, and diminishes and isn't allowed to, to to sustain you and you need that self-worth and you need that feeling of yes I'm a worthwhile person yes I believe in me yes I have confidence in who I am as a person yes I like myself I like me um as I said it's not you know it's not a if you like yourself then other people will like you it's a if you like yourself then you have the strength to find those other people who will like you for who you are, then you'll have the strength to do all those things that you want to do to improve your situation and, and stuff like that. Your self-worth, your, your ability to like yourself is your strength. And if you're finding that really hard and you're, like, you're struggling with that, then it, it's, it's a really bad situation to be in. I'm fortunate that I've never been in that situation but I know so many people who, who are and who do struggle with that and who do need someone else to give them a sense of self-worth um, and that's really hard that puts a lot of pressure on other people as well um, to to give 
you know, to install a person with, with self-worth because self-worth is something that does come from within. Yes, having other people believe in you and yes, having other people, you know, trying to give you confidence can help you build your sense of self-worth, especially if other people are the ones who've knocked it down. But you need you need to be willing to let it grow and part of that is being willing to like yourself even if you know you're not perfect even if there are lots of things like yourself that you don't necessarily like uh, like I, you know like I've been trying to do throughout this instead of saying I've got negative traits trying to say that I've got less positive traits um, so you know even even someone like me who does have a good sense of self-worth and self-positivity and you know, self-affirmation and stuff like that you know I still struggle with you know the language I use to describe the parts of myself I don't necessarily like as much um not because they're they're bad but because I don't necessarily like them as much you know they're not necessarily things that I want to grow and, and harbor and, and develop and, and foster and stuff like that but it's about understanding that you know even the language you can use towards yourself is important and if you're using positive language uh, towards yourself and if you're using affirmative language towards yourself then that's a way of starting to build your own self-worth even if other people aren't necessarily helping with that and if you have other people that are willing to sort of help you build your own self-worth that's great that's fantastic I'm not saying you shouldn't have that either because sometimes that's what it takes in order to, to start you on your journey towards liking yourself. But that's that's what it is. It's starting you on your journey towards liking yourself. It's starting you on your journey towards building up your own sense of self-worth. Because your sense of self-worth will always come from, from within. You know, you, you can't pay someone else to give you a sense of self-worth. You can't magically create a sense of self-worth. It is something you have to work on and it's not easy. Um, as I said, I'm fortunate that I have always had that, but there have been times you know, where I've been really low and really down and really depressed, where it's been really hard to see that. But it's that one last thing I've always kind of held on to, and that's what's pulled me through. And as I said, I'm, I'm not stupid. I know I'm very, very fortunate. So that's how things have gone for me and I know you know other people haven't been as fortunate for whatever reason but you know it's it's not easy <laughs> life isn't easy um and you know there there is a lot there's a lot that can be said <laughs> and I'm I don't know if I'm tangenting a little bit here in, not helping that my brain keeps like getting halfway through sentences and then losing track of what the sentence is supposed to be. <laughs> so I think I'm starting to talk myself into circles. Um, so I'm going to stop with this hard and heavy subject now because um, I've been babbling for quite a bit at this point and I'm not sure if anything I said has made sense and I'm hoping I haven't offended anybody with anything that I've said. I, you know, at the end of the day, this is just my experience, this is just my own you know, personal belief on the matter. I get that's not everybody's worldview, and I get this, you know, there's a lot of stuff that some people might not necessarily agree with um, for whatever reason, and, you know, if you don't, then that's fine. If you don't get it, that, that's fine. This is just, you know, my opinion and my stance on, on, on it all, and I do get that, you know, life is a lot more complicated <laughs> life is very complicated life is extremely complicated and one person cannot understand the existence of somebody else full stop um this is my existence this is my understanding of my existence this is beliefs that i have you know grown because of the way i have existed um and that's great for me but you know i'm you know just trying to share my experience. <laughs> I will stop rambling now. Um, okay, so the next one, next vlog has been entitled Balance. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet in what direction I'm going to take that in, whether that's going to be a rightly one, whether that's going to be a likely one. 
whether it's going to be a mixture of the two, um, we shall see when I get to it next time. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this sort of tangent <laughs> that this one ended up taking. Um, and I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!